Have you ever bought a second-hand car and you've found that somebody's installed an aftermarket alarm system in it? Well, if you have, you'll understand just how frustrating it is because usually these things are cheap, they're not meant to last, they splice directly into the car's wiring and a lot of them have immobilizers built in. So when they start to go a little janky, a little faulty, your car might intermittently not start. You might have weird situations where the alarm goes off without any provocation. Who knows? They're garbage. They're junk. Let's get them out of our cars and I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, all of these aftermarket alarm systems are pretty much the same, so it doesn't matter what car you have, you can still learn something from this video. Let me tell you a little bit of the history about why, in particular, I want to remove this from my car. Now, this car is my 1990 Firebird Formula. It is one of my dream cars, and if you've been keeping up with the series on this channel, you will know I've done a lot of work on the thing. It has a lot of problems. But one of the biggest problems was that it was leaving me stranded. You know, I would drive somewhere, turn the car off and then it just wouldn't start again and this weird blue LED would flash you know down there near the radio and I would have to jiggle the wires underneath the dashboard and you know finally it would start again this is obviously not ideal okay so <clears throat> the one thing that annoys me a lot about this car is that someone's installed an aftermarket alarm now it wouldn't be that bad if a they'd installed it properly and b the thing actually worked but what happened was, according to the Carfax report, this car was stolen a year after it was bought, so in 1991 it was stolen, and then recovered. So obviously the owner decided, hey, I don't want it to get stolen again and put this in, which, you know, I can't blame them for that. But the problem is, first of all, I don't have any fobs, so I can't, you know, there's no way for me to unlock it. And it does all sorts of weird things, like try to lock and unlock the car when you turn the ignition on and off and uh, sometimes the car won't start sometimes that light just doesn't come on um, you see what I mean like I don't know I, I I could probably fix it and make it work but I don't care if I really want an alarm system I'll put something up to date because this thing's ancient it's from the 90s so let's see Like I said, I don't need any more complications than I already have with this car, so I am going to now position the car in such a way that I can get under this dash, because I've looked under there and it's not pretty. It's a mess of crappy, badly installed wiring, and I'm very unhappy with that. So I'm just trying to not crash into any of my other cars here. Okay. See, when I turn off the ignition, you hear that doom and the doors, obviously it's got to do with the, the central locking. But yeah, I am not interested in this crap, so let's see what we can do to get rid of it. See if the car will still start if I first of all disconnect the main um, box of the alarm. If that works, then it's just a matter of taking all the wiring out. Okay, we've got this. This is obviously part of the alarm system. It was kind of just behind there. I think this is a like a little kill switch so you can disable the alarm. But under here, first of all, I don't know what this is. I don't like it that, I don't like the fact that something's unplugged. It's probably some kind of light. I could be wrong. But let's see if we can even see what's going on in here. Uh, let me get myself cell phone for, for light. Give me a second. Okay. Okay, so, over there is the, the alarm control box. And I'm sure you can see the wiring is just, what? The wiring is just absolute nonsense. Um, there's a lot of weird wiring going on here and it's all got to do with that stupid alarm box. So the first thing we're gonna do is unplug that thing and see if the car will start with it unplugged. Now in order to work in there a little easier, I'm going to remove this door sill and the kick panel so that I can actually gain access to all the wires because, you know, it's kind of a mess down there. But while I was at it, I noticed this very long blue wire that seemed to be connected to the whole aftermarket alarm system. So I traced it all the way back to the rear hatch. And yes, it is actually wired into the solenoid for the rear hatch. So what happens is, when the uh, central locking goes off, it unlocks the rear hatch as well. 
but I also discovered that the whole rear hatch motor mechanism thing is busted, so that's something to fix in the future anyway. That's not what this episode's about, so let's get back to the front. Seriously, I don't know what this tar crap is that they used to stick everything... What the hell? You know what? I mean, well, you just look at this absolute mess, this hot mess of garbage that's left over here. This is the control unit that's now out. And I'm going to see if the car will start. Let's hope. Okay, moment of truth. That piece of crap is disconnected. nice thing is, is now when I turn off the ignition, it's not trying to unlock the doors. Just imagine you stopped somewhere and you turned your car off, but you didn't want your doors unlocked because there's someone dangerous outside your door. And you turn your car off and your doors unlock. It's rather dumb. Anyway, that's, that's good news. Now I can start to reverse engineer the you know, bloody rat's nest of wiring. Okay, this is what's called a starter disconnect relay. And if I unplug this, the car doesn't start. So, you know, it's got all sorts of funny, badly wired in resistors and stuff. This crap has to go. I have to trace it back and figure out how it's been wired. I mean, come on guys, seriously, electrical tape and cable ties? Who did this? Anyway, and these like house screw, uh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I am going to have to trace this back and figure it out. In the meantime, I'm going to continue removing as much wiring as I can. We've got something that goes all the way that way. I don't know what it's for. Maybe it's for like a door opening switch on the passenger side. We'll find out. I found where the, the, the relay thing, you know, the starter cutoff relay is connected. What they've done is snipped obviously the main sort of power wire and then just spliced it in. But I'm not going to be messing with that until I disconnect the battery. Some might say I'm a little over um, prepared for this. I've got heat shrink. I've got, you know, all the different connectors. They call these butt connectors. Now, these are the biggest ones I've got, 12 gauge. I hope it's big enough because that's a very thick wire. But uh, it should be, it should be. So I'm planning to not only use the butt connector, but heat shrink as well. So I'm going to double it up because that's a super important connection. Let's see what I can do. Right guys, this is the part where you just be very methodical. Every single pigtail that was plugged into the control box, just follow it back to the main wiring harness and remove it wherever it was spliced in. You can do this by either just snipping off the wires or unwrapping them. In my case, a lot of them were just like wrapped around and then taped over with electrical tape. And then obviously, wherever you've removed the splice from, just cover it up nicely, either with some heat shrink or with electrical tape, that kind of thing. And, you know, it's a very simple process. Just bit by bit, remove every single wire that's connected to the wiring harness. Remember, we've already tested it with the control box off, so the car will still run. You can't mess anything up as long as you don't end up cutting any of your wires from your wiring harness. And remember, the only thing preventing the car from stopping was that relay. And the way it works is it just works like a bridge. They've cut one of the main power wires, the main ignition power wire, and run it through the relay. So I just had to find, in my case, it was a purple wire. I had to find both ends, which were cut, and then get rid of the relay, and then just connect the original wire back to itself. Very simple, very straightforward. And looks like the final thing is this LED. And I don't like the fact that there's a hole left in the dash. But I'd rather there be a hole than a freaking blue LED. Although, you know, I might leave that there just as a, you know, like as a spacer or whatever. But this, this is going, this is going to the trash. So far, it's what I pulled out of this thing. And of course I've spliced up and you know, insulated everything properly. Now, let's reconnect the battery and see if it'll start. Okay, moment of truth. Battery is reconnected. 
all of this garbage is out of the car. Now, let's find out if she'll start. <laughs> oh man, I can only hope. All right. Well. <laughs> system is thankfully completely removed. Awesome. So now everything's back together. This panel, by the way, all the clips are destroyed. I had to make a plant to get it on there, but it's on there. Everything is back the way it should be. Looks good. Well, that certainly was very satisfying, especially removing that rat's nest of wires, because when you've got so many bad connections, you don't really know which could be causing issues. So I'm just glad to have it all out of the car and it's all done. The only tool that I actually used was a crimper which isn't even necessary. You could use a pair of pliers if you really wanted to. And of course, the butt connectors and heat shrink uh, sealed the deal. I'm very confident that this is going to hold up for years now. And now I can be sure my car will not leave me stranded. Can't wait to see you guys in the next episode of Worthless Whips, and I hope you found this useful. Stay awesome.